Every time I feel the need to make a metagame discussion, Simo beats me by one day. You guys believe that? It's not like I'm trying to steal his content or anything, Baka. <sighs> that's, that's how I feel. So we're going to take a different approach to this metagame discussion. We're going to talk about the top decks, top five, there, there are obviously some honorable mentions, that you can use to beat today's current meta. Is that good enough for you? I'm sick of talking about Goki. I'm sick of sucking off Sky Strikers. You know, I think it's time that we appreciate the fact that I have an anime body pillow. Let's dig into this discussion, shall we? It's not like we needed to have a meta discussion or anything, Simo. Baka. Okay, we're gonna talk about the top decks to beat today's current meta. As I said, I've got like four honorable mentions on here, and then there's the, the, the big fives. So first off, the first one that can evidently beat the meta is Six Samurai. Nebraska Regional, we had one duelist walk in the room. Uh, this man is evidently an expert with Six Samurai, as I've been told. And he's played the deck for a little while, and bada bing, bada boom, out of left field, takes down the Nebraska Regional 7 fucking out. Tell me the last time you saw Six Samurai do anything. I'll, I'll wait. Uh, please. <laughs> <laughs> I've got all night for you to notify me that Six Samurais are a shit deck. Change my mind. One statistical win proves it correct as an anomaly. Oh wait, I'm not supposed to say that on camera. Well, for for the most part, Six Samurai, you know, for for as much as we talk shit on this format, they fucking they did it. Isn't that right, Lord Nines? No. Oh. And yeah, I need to stop talking on my fucking body pillow. But for the most part, Six Samurai is, if you've got the deck, you can evidently play the deck and shit on the fucking meta. Congratulations to all Six Samurai players. This is a win for you. Now, we're getting into the statistical boring shit now, unfortunately. Uh, True Draco over here. So, True Draco is winning right now because rivalry and goes in match. Statistical floodgates, baby. You guys, you guys remember the last time we were in a format where floodgates were good? Do 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 do. I remember why in a format, floodgates were pretty fucking good. I think there's probably another one where it was good. That's the one, last one that go uncle, old ass Robbie remembers. Floodgates having a consistent engine, having a recyclable engine, uh, having a means to play the game on your opponent's turn. Anybody, anybody remember? That these decks have that functionality. Uh, yeah, they do. Sorry to tell you that. True Draco having a means to play the game on your like literally the deck outside of Masterpiece is very consistent. And I, I've said this in other videos. If if Dynamite moves to more than one, I think we're gonna see a shit show. Like I think True Draco will actually evaluate itself further up the ladder and be much better than I, I think people are gonna give credit for. But True Draco is a deck that you can pick up. It's sort of budget. I mean, you don't need an extra deck. A Monarch's Erupts are decently cheap. I think the most expensive card you're going to have to pick up in your deck, besides four to five dollar heritages, is card demises. But <clears throat> you're going to need those demises to play the deck anyway. So, just my two cents. I think the deck is really fucking good as an anti-meta call, and I think the people that are kind of straying away from it are kind of doing it wrong. So, just just my two cents there. Uh, next up. Dinosaurs. Uh, we had a discussion last week. A lot of people, I guess, really like that video. I guess Robbie being uneducated, trying to get educated, is something people really enjoy. But dinosaurs, their budget. Ultimate Conductor is a hell of a card. Overtex is a hell of a card. Um, Ultimate Evolution Pill is a hell of a card. Miscellaneous Sarasaurus is a hell of a card. Honestly, everything that the dinosaur deck has at its arsenal is actually just a really good matchup against. Goki in general. I, I think a lot of people just kind of forget, hey, you know, obviously Goki's the best deck in the format, and things exist in the format to stop these powerhouses. Um, almost did it again. <sighs> Life is hard sometimes. But dinosaurs are a built-in counter to the current meta. Don't be dissuaded by the current format just because it's like you look at dinosaurs You see the limitations you're like I don't want to play this. No, uh, honestly the deck the deck's got a lot going for it 
and there's a dedicated player base to the deck that have definitely kept up with the deck over time. So I think a very good call to the current metagame is just dinosaurs in general. Honestly, I, I think you're you're going to be completely wrong if you stray away from just the power that dinos have going for it. Um, next up, Cyber Dragons. I've been beating this one down with a stick for the last week. I think a lot of people are kind of <clears throat> getting sick of me on the Cyber Dragon train. I'll be completely honest with you. I, I love the concept of going second decks. I still wish I had my Magnite stuff, uh, but... Having a deck in the format that can variably go second and break boards through game mechanics in fusion is what this game needs. Like, honestly. I think it's bullshit to have a deck like Goki existing that can go unpunished. That's that's not fair. So having something to give the format a balance in its own regard. Cyber Dragons do that. Plus, Cyber Dragons have enough support that they can now OTK. Not only do you have a deck that can break these bonds or chains of the extra link, you also have the means to OTK. Like, that seems like pretty good. Now, is the deck consistent? No, that's why the deck's not a problem. If the deck was consistent and could do this shit every game, no. And, I mean, has anybody seen the Cyber Dragon mirror? Like, that's a fucking shit show. Like, literally one of the worst things that you could actually do in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh. And the last deck I want to talk about is Mech Knight, whether or not be it be Mech Knight Invoked, Mech Knight, Trickstar Mech Knight. The Mech Knight engine in general kind of brings an interesting aspect to the game. Um, Mech Knights were the original, we can go second and do something um, here. And we've kind of seen the deck evolve evolve with the concept of time. Um, we've kind of seen the Invoked Engine kind of take a back seat for a little while here. Now, that's not a bad thing. It just means that people need to adjust, evolve, kind of grasp what's going on here. And I think it's it's important for people to understand um, Cyber Dragons exist, Invoked exist, Ancient Gears exist, these are good examples of going second decks. Maybe not so much Ancient Gears, but you you have a variable that exists in the format. Take advantage of it. You know, just my two cents. I think Mech Knight will only get more popular over time, especially with the release of Meltdown. Oh, good things are coming. Now, those are my big five. Now, before you get out the pitchforks, I do want to talk about honorable mentions here. Crusadio. I've seen a lot of Crusadia coming out of the LLDS series. Um, I haven't seen any regional level list yet. We're only the first week in, though. I'm not saying that Crusadia is bad. That's that's not at all. But it's not on the power level of, say, Cyber Dragons, in my opinion. Uh, I'm not saying that you can't go top an event with it, though. Get in the top 32, get your invite with it. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying when I look at the other decks results say one thing. Putting Crusadia below Six Samurai at the point in time is only because Six Samurai has won an event. Like, that's disgusting by my standard, but Crusadia is still very much a deck. It's not... It honestly deserves, like, the sixth spot here, but it is a deck that you can use to beat the meta, and that's, that's saying something by today's standards, and I think that people will take advantage of that in the long run, so just kind of something to think about. Now, something that we've seen coming out of Minnesota this weekend, somebody's cooking something with ABC FTK. Now, I didn't think we were going to see this anytime soon. Uh, I just kind of forgot about ABC for the longest time. But then I saw I saw some tournament reports talking about how they lost to ABC FTK. I was like, hmm, what's going on here? Well, evidently, the OCG concept of the FTK has made its way over here, and... I will say I am very much dim-witted by this. I'm very curious. I'd like to see the build. I'd like to see what we're doing to make this work. Because a lot of the OCG builds would rely on needle fiber and things like that. But we have... If somebody has a working list over here. And that's not good, Johnny. That's not good at all. We'll just... We'll leave it at that. Uh, next up on the food chain 
is danger. And I'm also going to wrap this in with um, BA because uh, Team Sam X1 just uploaded a hybrid build for this. Now, danger danger is good enough to make top 32 in an event. I, I almost, unless you run into like 17 Goki in a nine round tournament, I don't know how you're going to do that, but danger, it, it's got a lot going for it within itself. And I think, I think the deck with its hybrids can succeed. I, I think that's a very much a good thing. So give it time when you're looking at these decks in general, even so much BA, like combining hybrids between these two decks, um, you can do a lot of cool things in the format. And I, I gotta give it up to BA. BA's done a lot in the LLDS series. You know, Europe loves that deck. But so much in America, like, you gotta pick your poison when it comes to these particular decks. Um, I'm not, I, I think Danger will be successful probably more, more support they get. Uh, but I have been seeing very good progress from them so far. So no complaints on that. And then the last one I wanna talk about, this is also strictly LLDS. Um, Paleo. Now, Paleo, we still have three totally awesome. The deck can still do a lot. Um, deck doesn't have limitations, but it does take a very skilled player to want to play Paleo. Um, the deck is very niche, and that, that's not a bad thing at the end of the day, but once again, you have to understand it's fucking Paleozoic, you know? So understand that if you're going into a format, you have... Honestly, we, we have the we have the big decks. You you still have Sky Striker, you still have Goki, and you still have Alter Guys sitting at the lunch table. But in addition to the spectrum of these decks, you've got another ten sitting at the table. You know, we, we always talk about diversity and things like that. You're in a thirteen deck format right now that you could potentially see any of the spectrum of these decks. Um just whether or not it be from hype or the former success of it, but you've got a lot going for you here in the rogue category. And I think that rogue category is going to be something successful. So that's all I have for this video. Please leave a comment down below. Tell me what you guys think about our new sweet guest, Lord Ines, being brought to you guys by the fantastic companies in Japan for producing such great silk. And as of course, <laughs> y'all get mooned by Lord Irons out here. So, without further ado, that is all I have for this fantastic discussion. Don't be disappointed by the anime characters and the love that people feel for them. Alright guys, peace on out. The ride never ends, guys. Make sure you enable those notifications to get the latest videos that are being posted on this channel. Make sure you guys check out Van Cole 40 for my Cardfight Vanguard channel. And join me and House of Champions on the Zodiac Duelist TV Twitch stream. I will be interacting with our audiences. And please check out No Limit Gaming and LGTCG.com for the cheapest trading cards on the market. Thanks for watching, guys, and please have a good day.